Hi, this is Pastor Daryl Maya from Keller, Texas. Today is Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. This channel is all about world news, Bible prophecy, end time events, and the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm feeling a little nostalgic today. Uh, you know, we, we just got an offer on our house today, so we're hoping it's gonna work out. Um, gonna sell the house and move. Been in this house some 23 and a half years, and and I was thinking about my YouTube channel that got shut down and the 13 years plus of videos on there and teachings and messages and it just kind of makes me sad that suddenly that's all gone. And it just makes me realize that God brings us to seasons in our lives and you know, one season passes and a new one comes. So praise the Lord. Let's look at a few things going on today, though. Kind of show where we are in a biblical timeline. And you know, I talk about world news, things going on in the world, things that might relate to Bible prophecy. And then I always bring you the good news. This, this has been my, my standard ever since I've been doing this ministry. And uh, it's funny, I get a lot of people to come watch the world news and then they hear the good news. So... It's not like a church website where you know what you're going to get. You know, some people come here thinking they're just going to hear some commentary about what's going on in the world, and then I'm telling them about Christ. <laughs> anyway, out of the epic times, I hope you heard this story. OSHA suspends implementation and enforcement of vaccine mandate. It's really about all I'm going to say about that because I wouldn't want to violate anybody's guidelines. I'm just telling you that OSHA has suspended implementation and enforcement of vaccine mandate. This is news. This is true news happening around the world. I'm not speaking against anyone's vaccine or anyone's idea of the vaccine or anything about the vaccine. I'm just telling you OSHA will not sus um, has suspended implementation and enforcement of the vaccine mandate. I think we're up to uh, 41 states now that are suing the Biden administration over the vaccine mandate. 12 new ones just in the last couple of days. So a, a lot of people are saying, no, Joe, it's unconstitutional what you're trying to do. Um, I think we're gonna hear a lot more about that coming up soon. Let's go to Israel, out of the times of Israel. U.S. envoy to the U.N. urges Benny Gantz to refrain from moves that undercut the two-state solution. So many people are still pushing this two-state solution, which is really no solution at all for Israel. It would basically be suicide for Israel to agree to their two-state solution going back to the 1967 lines, there would be parts of Israel that would be no wider than nine miles wide. It's hard to defend that as a country um, because you could easily be hit from all sides with missiles. Two-state solution is only good for people who hate Israel. It's not good for Israel. But... You know, I've, I've had to catch myself over the last couple of years because what if the two-state solution is God's plan for Israel so that they are weakened to the point that their mighty military can't save them because the Bible's clear that the whole world will know it was the hand of God that saved them. <laughs> I just, anymore, I... I pray, Lord, I want to line up with your will. Please don't let me pray against anything that's part of your plan. Um, also, out of the times of Israel, visiting IDF exercise, Bennett and Gantz say that Israel is ready to act against Iran. Saying their army is better prepared now that a national budget's been passed and they are ready to take on Iran by themselves if they have to. They realize that Joe Biden doesn't have a backbone, doesn't have the ability to help anybody other than 
illegal immigrants. Um, I mean, the whole world saw what Biden did in Afghanistan, which is truly an impeachable offense. Not sure why he's still in office, but he is. Um, Israel is prepared to act alone in this regard. And I just, I've said it many times, I see Israel striking Iran's nuclear facilities in order to continue to exist, in order to preserve their ability to survive. And then Iran will get the pity of the world, the sympathy of the world, and say, you know, look what Israel did to our facilities. Let's go after them. And then you can read all about it in Ezekiel 38 and 39, and Iran will respond accordingly. God knew this from the beginning. Out of the Wall Street Journal, Iran resumes production of advanced nuclear program parts, according to UN Atomic Watchdog Agency. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, out of Israel National News, Syria claims Israel launched missiles towards Damascus. Every time I see something like this, I'm reminded of Isaiah 17.1, the prophecy against Damascus, which I think any day now we could see happen. You know, the prophecy that says Damascus will cease to exist as a city. It'll become a ruinous heap. Google pictures of Damascus. And look at it today. It already looks like a ruinous heap in many areas. One day we're going to open up the news and we're going to see the headline, Damascus completely destroyed. And I know that a lot of people are going to open their Bibles because they're going to be like, wait, isn't that in the Bible? They're going to be asking Siri, Siri, where's Damascus prophesied in the Bible? <laughs> to find out where it is. It's Isaiah 17 verse 1. Save you a little time there, because uh, Siri may not know, or Alexa, or whoever you use for your smart app. Um, moving on, uh, let's see here. Here was a story that just kind of made me sad. Out of CBN.com, headline says, New Barna survey finds that 38% of U.S. pastors have considered leaving the ministry. 38%? That's a huge number. That many preachers planning to resign? I mean, so many people leaving their jobs, being forced out, you know, for whatever reasons these days. But 38% of pastors are thinking of quitting? You know, we need more pastors. We need more people stepping up. We need disciples. We need to make disciples. You know, part of why I started this was hoping to encourage others to do the same. Um, and I've noticed several people have become preachers that follow my ministry. A um, couple of brothers I know up in Ohio, they're now both ordained pastors, and I'm not going to take any credit for it, but they weren't pastors when they started watching my channel. Um, and now they are. And I love you guys. You know who you are. <laughs> um, I know there's others. That's what we need to do. Make disciples. Uh, Jesus said, you know, it was a commandment, Matthew 28, 19. He said, go ye therefore into all nations, teaching them and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We need to make disciples. A lot of preachers looking to quit. You know, every time I turn around, I see a preacher that I know and love dying, passing away. You know, some of the, some of my favorite living pastors are in their 80s and 90s now. There needs to be a new generation, some new preachers preaching the truth from God's word, not tickling ears or telling people what they want to hear, but preaching the truth of God's word. We need to make sure that's what we continue to do. In fact, let's get into the Word today. In Romans 12, verse 2, you know this passage. Be not conformed to this world, 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you'll learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. The Bible tells us to keep ourselves unspotted from this world. James 1, 27 in the New Living Translation. How does the word spot or soil, how does that even happen? How does this world spot us? How does it make us dirty? I think it starts with friendship in the world. James 4 verse 4 says, don't you realize friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. You know, and that's, that's, that's real difficult for us a lot of times because the most famous scripture in all the Holy Bible, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world. And you think, well, if God loved the world and I'm made in his image, shouldn't I love the world too? I mean, makes perfect sense, doesn't it? We're not to love the things this world offers us. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you, John 2.15 says. 1 John 2.15. Okay, let, me, let me confirm that. Um, 1 John 2 verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any that love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Okay, those three things, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We have to be careful. We're walking a fine line here. Um... It's, it's our love for the world that results in our conformity to this world, right? So when you read in Romans 12, verse 2, not to copy the behavior of this world, but to let God transform you into a new person. We need to remember that. Um, look in the book of Genesis. When, when the angels came to deliver Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah, they had to practically drag him out of the city. How did that all start? I mean, the Bible tells us that Lot moved his tents to a place near Sodom and settled among the cities of the plain in Genesis 13, 12. Lot moved closer to Sodom. I mean, maybe he could see it from the hillside he was on. And next thing you know, he moved into Sodom. And before long, I think Sodom moved into him. Lot lost his testimony. Lot lost his family. And when judgment fell on Sodom, he lost everything. I mean, true spirituality, true spirituality is measured by what we do, not by what we say. So let's keep ourselves unspotted from this world. Be careful about the things you love. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We got to be careful. Um, we need to experience God's goodness. In Psalm 34, verse 8, it says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. I um, heard a story about a, a young lady who had been blind from birth, you know, and her mother, as, as this girl grew up, would always describe to her the beauty of the world around her. She'd talk about the sunrise, the sunset, the colors, the flowers, the trees, the beauty of the ocean, the lakes. And then one day her doctor told her about this new procedure that could enable her to see for the first time in her life. So she had this surgery, she came home with these bandages on her eyes, and then after three days they took the bandages off and she looked around at the beauty of God's creation for the very first time. She's sitting there with her mother 
after the bandages came off, and, and the girl said, Mom, why didn't you tell me it was all so beautiful? And the mom said, Honey, I, I tried to tell you, but you just had to see it for yourself. I mean, how do you describe colors to a blind person? How do you describe the color blue? Well, it's like the sky. Oh, yeah, they can't see that either. Well, it's, it's like the ocean. Oh, yeah, you can't see that either. How do you describe colors to someone who, who's never seen anything? How do you describe the sunset or a flower? You know, as we share the truth about God with others, our invitation isn't just for them to hear about God. Our invitation is for them to open their eyes and see God's goodness for themselves. So don't feel discouraged when you feel you're falling short in talking about God. Just give the simple invitation for others to taste and see God for themselves. Because everyone has to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ in order to have eternal life. You know, God doesn't have grandchildren. God only has children. You're not going to be saved because your mom and dad are saved. You're not going to be saved because you grew up in a Christian household. Every person has to receive this free gift of salvation and make it their own and make Christ their Savior. After all, we are the salt of the earth. Um, in Matthew 5, 13 through 16, and this is Jesus talking. He says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before them, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know, Jesus was telling his followers they're the salt of the earth. You know, in those days, salt was really the only way to preserve food. And as Christians, we too need to have the preserving effect on the earth because we have the only message that can deliver people from the corruption of sin and lead them to the one who can give them eternal life. So we're to be a spiritual influence in the lives of the people around us. So we don't conform to this world. You know, just as salt enhances the flavor of food, Christ-like character and godly lifestyles can be an example that draw others to the Savior that we serve. They'll notice our joy, they'll notice our contentment, and they may wish to have those same kind of qualities which are available only through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Salt also has unique healing properties, as does the Word of God. You know, if we take a moment to listen to people's hurts and pains, we'll have an opportunity to offer the truth that brings spiritual healing to those that are trapped in the darkness and despair of sin. Jesus warned us not to lose our saltiness, though. You know, if we tolerate sin in our life, then we're going to be just like the world, and we will be conformed to this world. So if you want to be a positive influence for Christ, we have to guard against falling prey to temptation and following after the ways of this world. Because, after all, our hope is in eternity. Luke 21, verse 18 says, But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. I mean, Jesus said the disciples were betrayed by their parents, their brothers, their friends. Some disciples were even put to death. But the amazing statement Christ is that not a hair of their head will perish. Now the context of that statement speaks of some of the disciples dying, so this isn't a promise that no physical harm will ever come. I think this could only refer to the resurrection. The Greek word for resurrection means a standing or a rising up. I mean the major theme of the New Testament teaching is resurrection. You know, some 13 sermons in the book of Acts 11, or um, there were 13 sermons in the book of Acts, 11 
stress or imply the resurrection. That's pretty significant. I mean, the hope of every believer is the resurrection. The natural, earthly, terrestrial, corrupt, mortal, weak, vile body will be raised, changed, fashioned into a, a spiritual body, a heavenly body, a celestial, incorruptible, glorious, and immortal body. That's amazing. This is the completeness that's been purchased for all of us in Christ Jesus. I mean, the Lord views everything in the light of eternity. God's not bound by the same space and time we are. You know, man views things in the context of his brief life here on earth. We, we kind of have blinders on. We see what's going on here. We're bound by space and time. We're bound by a 24-hour clock and a 365-day year. You know, we're bound by these things. God is not. Um, very hairs of our head are numbered. Hmm. I think Jesus is speaking about patience here. It, the calm assurance that God knows every ache and pain we feel, every hurt that we have, and he will abundantly recompense us in the resurrection. This knowledge enables us to control our emotions in the face of persecution, which is coming, instead of letting your emotions or your fears dominate you. God told us that those who follow after Christ will be hated for the name of Jesus. We will be persecuted. The Antichrist comes and makes war against the saints and overcomes them, the Bible says. So if you feel a little persecuted now, just wait. Because if you're not being hated for the name of Jesus, maybe people don't see who you serve exactly. So let me just say this. If you're not being, if you're not getting hateful messages or people sending you rude comments because of your faith in Christ, then maybe you're not demonstrating enough to everyone exactly who it is you serve. I've had some of the worst comments imaginable sent to me, been called every name you can think of, had people threaten to kill me and my whole family because I serve Jesus, because I speak against Islam, which only leads people to hell, because I believe babies should not be killed, because I don't believe that Gay people should be allowed to get married. I get a lot of hateful comments. Sorry, I go by God's word, not man's opinion. And I follow after Jesus. And honestly, sometimes I get some comments that really hurt. I've had a few today. Don't know if you can tell or not, but sometimes it wears me out. Other times it just lifts me up. So if you're not being hated for the name of Christ, then maybe you might want to step up your service. Maybe you might want to make sure others know exactly what you believe and who you serve. Because there's coming a time very soon, lines are being drawn in the sand even now. You either love Christ or you don't. You either serve him or you don't. You either believe him or you don't. There's no middle ground with God. Jesus even said, you know, I, I wish you were either hot or cold, but you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. It's time to understand and know what you believe. It's time to let people know exactly who you serve because the time is drawing near. Christ will return just like he said he would. Will he find you faithfully serving? 
or will he find you just serving yourself? It's time to step up your game and start witnessing and being the salt and the light that Jesus said you are. I love you guys. God bless you. Good Lord willing. I'll see you again tomorrow.